hopefully this thing is on. Everything is working okay. I'm a little bit early today. Hopefully my stream is okay because it that would just be like the cherry on top as if our internet just like gives out from under us. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to assume all is well, unless someone in the chat tells me something's going on. Hi everybody. <laughs> it's Lindy. Welcome back to my channel. If you're watching this at a later time, this was streamed live with a live chat going on in the sidebar. If you want to be able to be a part of the Monday live chat, make sure to hit the little bell icon that's next to the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified when I go live, but you do have to be subscribed in order to be notified. So make sure that the sub that the subscribe button is checked when you hit the bell. Uh, I'm just completely thrown it back today, you guys. I am so sorry. I'm going to hope that I'm coherent. Um, and I'm so happy to see everybody here. Hey, you guys. Okay, so again, I'm sorry. I don't know how motivating this Monday chat is going to be, but I wanted to talk to you guys and let you know of a situation that I dealt with over the weekend. And the the um, the title is not clickbait in any way. This is like a serious warning for you guys. It is not clickbait to get you guys here, which I already see over 150 people here. Hey, you guys. No, it's a serious warning for you guys because I just dealt with, the craziest, wildest situation over this weekend because of this whole, you know, coronavirus pandemic that we're starting to deal with. Um, yeah, I was saying you like the shirt. I figured that the shirt was appropriate, you know, because hello, folks, <laughs> we're closed for two weeks to clean and repair America's favorite family fun park. <laughs> yeah, school's closed here. Uh, they just closed it for a week. Um, they might extend it. I, I fully anticipate them extending it. Shorty, do up. You look so nice. This is like, this is quarantine hair. And I'm glad that you guys can't smell me through the computer. I've been stuck in the house. And we're not leaving, going anywhere. Um, Gabe, some states are really shutting stuff down. Yeah, uh, yeah. People are getting stabbed over bottled water. There's fist fights. Yeah, I see fist fight yesterday in town at HEB. Yeah, it's getting crazy. So, okay, over 200 people here. I'll go ahead and tell you guys what happened over the weekend and why this is a legitimate warning to resellers. Okay, so you guys know that there's a lot of stuff that people are trying to get their hands on because everybody is freaking out. Everybody is worried. There's rushing at the stores to try to stock up on, you know, supplies, which I already did. You know, I'm just, I am so extremely grateful <laughs> that I stocked up a week ago. Like I, I stocked up on some stuff that we needed. I stocked up on about 30 days worth of stuff at a minimum that we needed before everybody went crazy and cleared the shelves. Um, so I did it a little early so I didn't have to worry about, you know, not finding the things that my family needed. Um, so there's lots of things that people aren't, you know, able to get. And one of those things is hand sanitizer, right? People joke about, toilet paper and things like that. But there are serious things like hand sanitizer that people are in need of. And so this is why this is a warning for resellers. Let me tell you the story of what happened to me this weekend. I'm still kind of in shock. <laughs> okay. So you guys know that I buy liquidation. I actually have... Uh, Scott Patron said a super chat quarantine hair. Can I sell you a brush? Yeah, this is, this is quarantine hair. Thank you so much, Scott. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, so you guys know that I buy liquidation and I do have a lot of local clients. Just last week, I posted videos about how I utilize Facebook marketplace for selling merchandise locally, how I have a list of local clients and they're kind of my VIPs. Anytime I do a pop-up sale out of my garage, I send a very customized message to all of these people. Um, but I don't sell a lot publicly locally. So 
I kind of forgot that this weekend. Um, and so what ended up happening was in my garage, I found two cases of hand sanitizer. Legit just stumbled across them. I'm like, I forgot these were here. They were sealed cases of hand sanitizer. Can't sell them anywhere. I tried listing them on Mercari. Mercari pulled them down within 90 seconds. You cannot sell them on Amazon. You cannot sell them on eBay. Literally nowhere for me to sell this hand sanitizer. And so I was like, you know what? I'll sell them locally because I know that our shelves are clear here. And I'm sure that people want some hand sanitizer. So I listed the hand sanitizer on Facebook Marketplace. Within seconds, oh wait, hold on. It wasn't technically Facebook Marketplace where this problem happened. It was um, uh, the local buy, sell, trade page. So what happens is if you guys watched my Facebook Marketplace listing video, you can list on Facebook Marketplace and then also attach the listing to a buy, sell, trade group. So that's what I did. I, I also put it on the buy, sell, trade group. And I listed them two for $5. So $2.50 a bottle. Okay. $2.50 a bottle. And they were eight ounce bottles. They're, they're this kind. They weren't the aloe. They were like the regular, which and a lot of people are saying, keep them. Trust me, you guys, I'm covered. I've got plenty of hand sanitizer. I'm I'm good. I got lots. So there was 24 bottles. They were two small cases. So 24 bottles. And so I told people two for $5. So $2.50 per bottle, which to me is not price gouging, right? Two for $5, no sales tax. Two for five dollars for an for an eight ounce bottle. Two dollars and fifty cents. Within seconds, I started getting blown up with messages and comments on that post, telling me that I was everything wrong with the world. How dare you? go clear the shelves and then sell them to us for a markup profiting off of all of these scared people. I had so many people cussing me out, telling me what a horrible human being I was. I had people threatening to find where I lived and they were going to come after me and teach me a lesson. I am not kidding. Like these people were rallying to come after me for trying to sell them hand sanitizer. I was completely thrown aback. I thought, I genuinely thought people were going to be grateful that I had hand sanitizer because they needed it and they wanted it. I genuinely thought that people were going to be happy and message me, thank God you have hand sanitizer. Say things like, I just had a baby. I need hand sanitizer. I haven't been able to find any at Walmart. But instead of that, everyone was threatening me, cussing me out, telling me that I should be ashamed of myself. There was a couple of people kind of in the middle that were commenting on the post saying things like, hey, everybody, you might be overreacting. She might be a couponer. She might have her own stockpile. You know, don't assume that she is trying to profit and doing price gouging. And I started, you know, I started replying to a couple of people saying things like, I'm not price gouging. And then they're replying back to me with screenshots saying things like Target sells these for $1.89. So you're price gouging, charging us $2.50. And I'm like, yes, but I'm not charging you sales tax. And I have the bottles. Like I didn't get them from Target. Like it was, it was like such a crazy misunderstanding. Nobody was being rational. Everyone was freaking out. It's like people could only process, 
Like no, nobody wanted to hear that I was a reseller and I got pallets from, from liquidation companies. Like nobody was able to comprehend. Nobody was able to comprehend that I buy pallets in liquidation and I just happen to have cases on a pallet. It's like everybody immediately assumed that I was one of those a-holes that cleared the shelf, just like that guy. I don't know if you guys, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the story about, was it Brothers in Tennessee? Um, people who had a box truck that just like drove around the state of Tennessee and like a 1500 mile radius and just bought all of the hand sanitizer. They bought all of the Clorox wipes, all of the face masks. They like bought up all of this stuff so that they could flip them on Amazon for like $50 a bottle. And so that's immediately where everybody's mind is going is if you are trying to sell anything, and that's why this is a warning to resellers. If you have any merchandise that you can sell that people need right now that they can't find on the store shelves, be very mindful of selling them to people <laughs> because damn, like that's all I can say. I ended up after 10 minutes, I ended up pulling down the listing um, and just hiding in a hole. I'm like, I just, even, even on Instagram, even on Instagram. So I also posted on Instagram because there was a few people that had reached out to me on Instagram saying things like, Hey, Lindy, I know that you get a lot of health and beauty stuff in. Do you happen to have any hand sanitizer? And at the time I didn't have any. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I don't have any. But then I found those cases. And so when that happened with the local, with the local community, um, I put it on Instagram and then I started getting DMS on Instagram because I had said that I can do for one bottle. And this is where it sounds really, really bad. So I said, I can do one bottle for $8. I'm just going to start throwing the hand sanitizer now. I had told people I can do $8 with free shipping to anywhere in the United States because believe it or not, you guys, like I know resellers, we should know these things, but this bottle with the weight, even though this is a $2 bottle of hand sanitizer, this still costs $5 to ship. It's $5 to ship this. I know this because I've shipped it to a couple of people over PayPal that have private messaged me asking if they could buy it and have it shipped. So I had told people on Instagram, I can do $8 a bottle, including free shipping. Because after PayPal fees, after the shipping costs, I'm breaking even. I'm not even making any money because on the pallet that I bought these on, my cost was like $2 per unit. So I'm literally not making any money. But even on even on Instagram, people started sending me DMs, $8 a bottle. That's ridiculous. Why are you price gouging your viewers? And I'm like, $8 and free shipping is not price gouging. This thing costs $5 to ship. These aren't like, and it's just people are losing their minds. People are just thinking that everybody is trying to profit off of the panic of a pandemic. And it's really sad. It's heartbreaking. Like it completely changed my point of view of my local community. The way that these people just attacked me over trying to sell bottles of hand sanitizer for $2 and 50 cents a bottle. So this is my warning dealing with this firsthand. This is my warning to any reseller that's listening. Be very careful selling anything to anyone that people need or that people think they need. This could be hand sanitizer. This could be Clorox wipes. This could be tissues, toilet paper. It could be cold and cough medicine. 
I mean, it could be anything that people are seeing as a need that they can't find at the store because maybe the shelves are clear. Because if the shelves are clear, people are automatically going to assume that you are the a-hole that cleared the shelf and that's why they can't get it. And now you're trying to sell it for profit, especially because if you have to ship it to somebody like over um, eBay or Mercari or PayPal or whatever, sometimes these people don't understand how much it costs to ship. Like a lot of people, you know, just say that's a $2 thing, a hand sanitizer. Why are you charging me $8? Well, because it's $5 to ship it because it's heavy. It doesn't matter if it's only $2 at the store. It's expensive to ship. And so just be very, very careful if, if you're going to try to sell things that people need that they can't get their hands on right now, be advised, take heed my warning that you're going to get crap for it. And that's really disappointing because people right now have this mentality of just being angry because they can't get the things that they want. They can't get the things that they need. And they're looking to lash out. Even if you have something that they need, they're lashing out. That's the thing that I couldn't believe. And not only that, but something else that I noticed is starting to, um, something else that I'm starting to notice happening. And this is another warning. Um, be on the lookout for people looking to send lowball offers and try to pull on your heartstrings to get good deals. I have been seeing a, a lot of people also talking about starting to get lowball offers. Um, you know, I really like sending um, sending offers in eBay or sending messages in eBay. I really need this item. I'm out of work for the next two weeks and I don't have a paycheck, so I don't have a lot of money to spend. Please have a heart and sell this to me for a dollar. Like that kind of thing is also starting to happen. So you know, just be advised. There's a lot of people right now that are really tugging on heartstrings, trying to get really good deals. Um, it's up to you, honestly, it's up to you whether or not you want to let people take advantage of a better price. I mean, it's also going to depend a lot on how your business is doing right now, if you have things to sell and you can take a lower price and you're willing to take a lower price just to kind of have some sort of cash flow coming in, it's going to, you know, matter how your sales are, if you can withstand not having sales for a while, whether or not you want to go ahead and take these good deals, as long as you're not losing money, maybe just getting some money back or having some sort of cash flow coming in. It's, and that's, this is another warning too. Um, it's not really so much a warning as like a, a notice or something to think about. Don't worry about your business collapsing in this moment. If people stop shopping online for a couple of weeks, I don't think it's going to have a crazy negative impact on your business. You know, my sales have taken a dip. I know a lot of people are experiencing a dip in their sales, but then at the same time, I do also think that that dip is going to be temporary. Now, of course, this is just my opinion. I do think that this dip in sales I do think it's not going to last. I think that some people are kind of overreacting and they're going to start having fire sales in their store because they're worried about people not shopping. I don't think that that's the case. Um, also because, I mean, I think a lot of people are staying at home self-quarantining and they're going to get bored. And so they're going to shop online. So I don't necessarily think that nobody is going to be buying anything online anymore. Um, Johnny Hot Rod, my sales went up. Yeah, so I really, I, I think it's just a dip. I think maybe people are just a little, a little worried at the moment. Maybe people are spending all of their money on hand sanitizer and toilet paper, but then, you know, in a couple of months, they're gonna get back to, they're gonna get back to spending money. Um. Yeah. And it to flip it for water. Yeah. I saw who was it? Someone said someone was assaulted. 
Where did it go? Over bottled water? Oh, my chat is moving so fast. I lost it. Yeah. And I don't understand the bottled water thing either. Either Like I will, I will admit I did buy a couple of cases of bottled water. I did. I did. Because, and, but you know why? Because everybody is buying bottled water. And so it's kind of like that mindset. What do these people know that maybe I don't know? Will I be stupid if I don't buy some bottled water? Because bottled water is getting cleaned out. Maybe I should go ahead and buy. It's like one of those, it's one of those things you see everybody else doing it. And so there's that concern. What do they know that I don't know? Um, so, you know, I did buy a couple of cases of water. I didn't go crazy on bottled water. Um, I more so went crazy on food supplies for us because I am not planning to leave for a while. Like I, if they close school down indefinitely, I'm, I'm good. Like we don't have to leave. I went ahead and got enough food that we don't have to leave. We we're good. But like, I didn't go crazy on like apocalypse supplies or anything. <laughs> I didn't like go crazy and buy, you know, 50 pounds of grain or anything like that. Harlan's reselling adventures sent a super chat. Thank you, Harlan. Send me some hand sanitizer. Just kidding. Have a good one, Lindy. Seriously, though, if you guys need hand sanitizer, I still have one. But I, I, I still have one. I still have some. Um, but I do think there was actually, so Autumn, my assistant Autumn, I told her about what happened when I posted it on Facebook marketplace. She was thrown aback too. She was like, are you kidding me? People are losing their minds on you and threatening you. I'm like, yeah, they're losing their damn minds over this. So she actually posted on her Facebook page, letting people know that I had hand sanitizer if they needed it. And so a couple of her friends contacted me and I did sell a couple sets of hand sanitizer to some of her friends. Um, and it kind of gave me an idea of where to donate it to. One of the uh, one of the gals that bought some hand sanitizer from me, her husband she bought it because her husband works, and this is kind of sad. I don't know if it's this way everywhere, but she bought the hand sanitizer from me because her husband works the gate at Fort Riley, which working the gate means that's where you check IDs uh, for people coming to post. And they're responsible. She said that her husband was responsible for having his own hand sanitizer and his own latex gloves. Because, you know, you're, when you're checking the gate, you're like, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. And you're touching IDs of all of these people that are trying to get on post. How many people are you going to be handling IDs for in 10 minutes? And so she wanted the hand sanitizer for her husband who works the gate. And so I'm thinking I might reach out to her and see if I can just like give her all the hand sanitizer for them to just like keep at the gates for the military installation. Because if that's the case, that's pretty crappy um, because they're handling identification of thousands of people every single day trying to get on and off post. Um Christine, yes, I used to buy so much hand sanitizer when I checked IDs at Fort Custer. Yeah, um, but yeah, they don't have any gloves. They can't find any gloves anywhere either. So I'm like, okay, well now, you know, even just talking to people, I'm starting to get ideas. Okay, well, where can this hand sanitizer be put to good use? Um, yeah, and they've like, they've closed down the hospital here and everything too. It's crazy. Or rather they closed down all of the the entrances. You can still go into the hospital. Um, but, oh, Tammy HD, thank you. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. So just, again, if you joined a little late and you missed the bulk of the story, if you are selling things currently, if you have in your possession items that people are in need of, be very, very cautious trying to resell it online or selling it locally because people are losing their minds and they are automatically going to think that you are one of those jerks 
that cleared the store shelves. And now you're trying to profit off of people not being able to find it and selling things for this crazy markup. Um, I'm still thrown aback that people accused me of price gouging when I was selling hand sanitizer for not even a, like it was, so people were sending screenshots that the hand san the, the exact hand sanitizer I was selling was only a dollar eighty nine at Target, and I was price gouging them at asking two dollars and fifty cents. And honestly, the only reason I was asking two dollars and fifty cents was because I thought that two for five dollars was a nice round number. Like, give me a five dollar bill, and there's two hand sanitizers. Like. That's the only reason. Otherwise, I would have said $2 a bottle. But I figured two for five just sounds better. That was my mistake. <laughs> that was my mistake. And I got raked over the coals this weekend. People lost their minds on me. I still can't believe. I still can't believe how many people cussed me out and threatened me. It was obscene. Obscene. But, um, so this is just a fair warning. Also, Lynn, yeah, Lynn says, I've seen it sold for $60 a bottle. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Um, so anyways, but I've gotten over it, but this is a warning to you guys because it completely threw me aback. And so I wanted to talk to you guys about it. Let you know, give you some fair warning. If you have anything that people need, <sighs> Be very careful selling it right now because people are very, very, very sensitive, very, very sensitive to the situation. And where you would think people would be wanting to join together and like help each other, they were so quick to attack. It completely blew my mind. Also, Something else, report them to Facebook. Yeah, I, I did some blocking and some reporting. We'll see what happens. Um, so then, Perrin, yeah, emotions are running very, very high right now. Also, something else that I wanted to talk about um, that's kind that's that is still related, not to the whole reselling of sensitive material thing, but I also wanted to talk to you guys about please consider just staying home. Please consider just staying home. I'm seeing lots of people on social media still posting about going to the thrifts and just carrying on like nothing is going on. Um, this is a very, this is a serious virus, you guys. And I know a lot of people are kind of not taking it very seriously. You know, there's a lot of people that are just kind of like, and it's only affecting people that are older. So I'm younger. So I'm okay. I'm not really worried about it. You guys need to take this a little bit more seriously than you are. There's reports of people getting this multiple times. So it's not just like, oh, I'm just going to have a cold and then I'll move on with my life. This is a virus that is recycling sa the same people over and over again. There, it's so easily spread. This was a conversation I was having with my mother because I was really, I was really trying to figure out why people were taking this so much more seriously than like the flu. Like, oh, you know, people, more people die from the flu as of right now. So why weren't people shutting down school for the flu? Why weren't people closing Disney World for the flu? You know, and so I'm talking to my mother about this. My mother, uh, works at a hospital. She's a registered nurse. She has been for over 30 years. And so talking to my mom about it, trying to figure out why this is such a big deal. And, and my mom was telling me it's because it, it, you can't stop it. It spreads so much faster and they don't know what to do to stop it. The only way to stop it is to just keep people away from each other and stop spreading it. Um, and so that's why it's so much more different than the flu, because even though the flu kills more people and has killed more people than this has, there is this real possibility that this could kill even more people than the flu just because it can't be contained. So I'm highly encouraging everybody to just stay home, just stay home. 
Like, even though you might not get sick or you don't care about getting sick, you can still pass it to somebody else that gets sick. It seriously is starting to break my heart a little bit, even seeing on social media, people still going to the thrifts like nothing's going on. I understand that our businesses need to continue, right? Our businesses need to continue. We still need to make money. We work from home, whatever. But going to the thrifts, that's just, it's irres. in my opinion, it's irresponsible. It's extremely irresponsible. You can literally help by just sitting on your butt on the couch and watching Netflix, you guys. It's not that hard. <laughs> like, we can make it so that it's not so tragic just by planting our butts on the couch and watching Netflix. It's not like it's it's not like they're asking everybody to go to the hospital and get shots to prevent sickness. It's they're just asking you to stay home, but yet we are so addicted to going thrifting and going to the bins and going out sourcing like just stay home. It's just stay home. People are like babies are being born every day. There's people. My mother was uh, talking to me about the area that they used to live in Everett, Washington, that there is a, a nursing home there where half of the people that are in that nursing home have died because of this virus. Like it's it's a serious thing. And even if you're not getting sick, you can easily spread the germ somewhere else that can make somebody sick. So just stay home. List the things that you have. Go through, go through your closets and sell your own crap. If you run out of inventory, if you run out of inventory and you don't want and, and you shouldn't go to the thrift, go through your own closets, sell your own stuff. Like you don't have to, you don't have to go out and source to, to list and sell stuff online. Like seriously. So this is me saying, everybody just stay home and watch Netflix. Stay home and watch Netflix. If your pay dips a little bit, which, you know, mine has, <laughs> because I'm not selling as much because of all of this, just, it's okay. It's okay. Just take a couple of weeks. Just take a couple of weeks. Like right now, I can hardly work because Benjamin is home. And as much as I love him with all my heart, he has never been more needy than he is right now. Like I can't even sit at the computer and check my email without him hanging on me and crying for me to stand up. So this is a time where we should be spending the time with our families. We should be binge watching Netflix. We should be eating some rice and beans, wiping our butts with some toilet paper if you have some and just staying home. So Yes, I'm seeing this a lot in the chat. This too shall pass. Absolutely. What about shipping stuff? Yeah, I mean, you can still ship stuff. So just use hand sanitizer, wash your hands. You know, they're saying that, at least this is the last I looked, they're saying that still, you know, shipping things and checking your mail, that's still okay. They're saying that like, while things are being transmitted in the mail, that enough time is passing to where the spread of germs is kind of dying off. So not worry about that. I do worry about my postman. I actually think I'm going to leave some hand sanitizer on my front porch for my postman today um, so that he's got some. I don't know if he has some or not, but I think I'm going to leave some on the porch when he comes and picks up my packages. Um, yeah, still be shipping, still be shipping. There's there, there's nobody um, that has said anything like don't send things in the mail or anything like that. At least not that I have seen. I, I have not seen anybody saying that yet. Um, you think customers are worried about the coronavirus in the mail? Uh, I don't. I think that the percentage of people that are worried about getting the coronavirus in their mail, I think that is a very, very, very small percentage. Um, I think that if anything, people are more worried about not um, Minister Bay unsubscribed. Bye. Bye there. Um, so <laughs> I'm, I'm unsubscribing. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, then. Why are you still here? Troll. 
Um, I think that people are more worried about not having an income because they're having to stay home. So they're holding on to their money. That's what I think. That's why I think people are, you know, not doing as much online shopping or maybe focusing their funds on the things that they need, like medicines, um, over the counter kind of stuff. I don't think it's because, I don't think it's because people are worried about catching the coronavirus from their packages. I think that they're just more worried about, okay, I had to stay home for an extra week. My paycheck is going to be smaller. Um, so I'm, I need to be more cognizant of where I'm spending my money. I think that's more about why people are not spending so much money. So, okay, you guys, but it's, it's been a little over 30 minutes. Benjamin is upstairs with my eldest child who is also home. I promised him I'd only do 30 minutes today. He was like, mom, you always say 30 minutes and it's like an hour. And I'm like, that never happens. <laughs> uh, yeah. Common sense. See, and I think that's something that happens. I think that that's something that happens when people get panicked and scared is that a lot of people lose a lot of common sense. And so I think that we need to just remember to be kind to each other. The whole, so the, the, the cool part is we have to do the social distancing, right? Like don't get within six feet of another person, but we have social media. So, you know, we can connect with each other over YouTube. We can connect with each other over Instagram. We can keep, everybody can keep their spirits up, you know, and just know that if you are suffering slower sales, so is a lot of other people. So know that you're not alone. It's not just, it's not just you. It's not just, oh, people aren't buying from you. It's people aren't buying from a lot of stuff. It's everybody, even me, like, my sales are down too. So it's, I do believe it's going to be temporary. And also this might be a good opportunity to, um, use this as a learning, uh, a learning opportunity as well to always have a buffer. Like I know I've talked before about a lot of people keeping a buffer like I do for summer. Um, we've talked about this before. I think it was last year sometime though. It's been a while. So when summer slows down, try to have like a buffer in your bank account so that you can kind of offset the slower sales season. Um, you know, ha that having that same buffer too, so that you're not relying week to week on a certain amount of sales to pay bills. Um, because stuff like this happens, economies can just economies, the economy can just like take a, a nosedive in the blink of an eye. I mean, we saw that over this last week. So having some sort of a buffer, having a little bit of extra savings to kind of balance out and mellow out this time of when people just stop shopping and sales go down. Uh, yes, a buffer in your pantry too. Absolutely. Because if you always have a buffer in your pantry, if you go to the store and the shelves are clear, you don't have to worry so much. Um, so, okay, you guys be kind to each other. Just stay home. Binge watch Netflix. Let me know what you're watching on Netflix. Um, because I need to binge watch some stuff. They put Outbreak on, on Netflix. I think I'm going to watch an Outbreak later. I love that movie. I remember seeing that movie at the movie theater, Outbreak, back in 1995. I was like 11. I <laughs> I don't know why. I love that movie, though. I, I just, I don't know. Is that horrible? Is that making me horrible? It's, it's, it's because it's a very well done movie. It's very, very well done. Like, really good story. Hits all the emotional, like, stuff. Um, Freaks is amazing. I saw, I saw, uh, I saw Freaks. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. But okay, you guys. All right, I'm gonna go be kind to each other, watch lots and lots of Netflix. Everybody just hang low. I'm planning to be live next Monday. I don't see any reason why um, why I won't be live. Because I mean, hopefully Benjamin will be back in school. I don't know, <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to see. All appointments, everything being canceled. But all right, you guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care of yourself, stay healthy, eat good food binge watch Netflix, and I'll talk to you guys next Monday. Bye, you guys. And many, many sales. Make that money.